Hi folks, I'm so excited to share a facet of the gospel along with you this morning. And uh, just keep in mind that this is a facet of the gospel, just like once Nicola explained with a piece of diamond, um, which just shines all around. So uh, so when I share the gospel, for me it's a, it's a facet of the gospel. Because I know that each and every one of you would have uh, would have a revelation from the from the Lord, and and the revelation that I share um, is going to complement. You know, I'm not wanting to supersede any other teaching or any other revelation that um, everybody is going to bring. So these days, um, I have been just meditating through John's Gospel, um, chapter 14, 15, 16, 17. And I just want to share something that touched me. And one of the repeated theme along these chapters where when Jesus repeatedly says that in that day, um, you, you will know. So this theme runs across these passages in that day. And the speciality about that day is that that's the day when the, the death, burial and the resurrection has happened already. That's the day when Holy Spirit has come. And for us, that day is now. This is that day. Uh, now is that day. It has come upon us. And when we look at what Jesus said about that day, it is so exciting. It is so extraordinary and it is so beyond natural it is beyond the physical mind to understand and grasp those things that is why jesus told while he was still here along with his disciples that what i'm going to tell you you will not be able to bear it now so from that it is very much clear that the true gospel, the enormity of it, the beauty of it, the wideness of it, um, the excitement of it. We cannot fully grasp it just by mere natural natural reasoning. We, we definitely need Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, in that day, when the Spirit has come, He will lead you into all the truths. So we see that that in that day, which is now, this is the day, in this day, we got uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit as our teacher, the teacher. And each and every one of you folks, you are getting revelation from the Holy Spirit. He is your true teacher. And um, he is able to bring into a deeper uh, revelation and clarity when we allow him fully, when we... Um, you know, allow him to father us, um, that he will lead us in a mighty way uh, deeper into these re revelations. So one verse that stood out from from the number of in that day you will know verse. And one is from um, John's Gospel chapter 14 verse 20 where Jesus says, In that day you will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. What a beautiful scripture. Very powerful, um, very deep. In that day, the, uh, the good news is, this is now. Now, now we will know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. What a joy. Hallelujah. So as soon as you hear I am, you can always uh, go back to the um, book of Exodus and, um, and see what God told, uh, Yahweh told uh, Moses. He said, I am that I am. Jesus said, um, the moment Jesus mentioned, you know, I, I am or I was uh, before Abraham, Pharisees and the religious teachers around him understood exactly what he meant. He equated himself with the I am of the Old Testament. So here we are seeing that Jesus is saying that I am, you know, the, the expression of the Father. Um, through him, through this I am, this I am is holding everything together. Uh, we have our being, we have our existence, we have the meaning of our life in him. Apart from him, the existence has no relevance. Um, there is no meaning to life. 
uh, our lives are a gift of love from him we are a wonderful beautiful um, children of god an object of his love so i am gave us that meaning and the relevance to our existence now to know that um, that i am is in me and um, that that he is in the father and we are in the father um, which is a beautiful powerful news and there is much depth to it than what meets the eye so um, so when jesus says i am in i is in the father yeah you can understand that and now when we think from our own perspective let us say um, now what will you say okay jesus said i am is in the father okay and you are in me and now uh, if you have to repeat this sentence from from your own perspective how will you say so for, for example if i have to say um this reality of my union with christ this reality of our oneness with the trinity if i i am to say that if i have to express it i will say something like this i will say i am is in christ i am is in the father and i am is one with the father son and holy spirit i am so that i am now has a has a deeper spiritual meaning um so the moment we are saying i am folks we are referring to the innermost being that is within us who is in union who is at oneness with the father and that i am folks is the new man in christ that i am is the is the inner man that i am is not the physical that i am is the is the person who is made whole the person whom god the father so even before the foundations of this world so the moment you say i am you are speaking about that spiritual man you are speaking about your core your inner being the inner man the true man in christ you are talking about um, a divine being i'm not sure whether you are able to catch it or not that is why we need the holy spirit that is why this is this is um, this day this is not that day anymore this is the day with the help of the holy spirit that we will gain and grasp this truth that that the moment you say i am you are referring to the spiritual man within you at the very core of you at the very um, uh, root of our lives is a person a divine divine person who is in union with the father now that is our true self the 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 challenges um, sometimes that we face uh, in this world you, you know the, those challenges are very real and let me tell you something that um, i found out recently from a true research and the research that um, that um, was done on human thoughts and human thinking was that human beings are bent uh, slightly towards um, negativity negativity kind of attracts them and they say 50% of that is genetic and um, and then and, and the reason being their explanation is that is because of the way our forefathers lived um, they were hunter gatherers and they were constantly on the lookout for danger um, they had to protect their uh, families they had to fend off um, the the wild animals or whatever danger so that were coming against them so this constant lookout for danger has rewired our um, genetic code in such a way that we are hypersensitive towards um, any negative news hypersensitive towards any danger any perceived danger or even non perceived danger our brains are so much wired like that 
and then so that's the reason from the the moment when we are born even when we are a child if somebody have said something negative about you your brain would have just captured it uh, it would have gone into your subconscious mind like a like a sponge that absorbs or absorbs the water uh, it would have just gone in laid there in the subconscious mind and and that just adds up and not to mention when something like um, a worldwide pandemic or a recession um, that's going around it just compounds these things in uh, in general public's mind um, and media takes advantage of it to sell they they sell using fear but when we look at the gospel um the beauty of the gospel is that um the gospel presents to us such a wonderful good news and um what i want to tell is that folks we were fathered by our um, our atmosphere our physical genetic thinking um the thinking that uh that's out there in the world so much of negativity throughout the centuries um throughout even from the time of fall and this have really um fathered uh, let us say fathered the way we think fathered even our genetic coding even the dna within us it, it has fathered our brains um but now the gospel is saying this is that day guys when we will be fathered by the holy spirit we will be fathered by the truth so um we will be fathered fathered by the reality so now by the holy spirit we come to recognize and know that the moment you say i am that i am is a divine being whom god the father so i want to uh, explain about that from book of ephesians a little bit whom god the father so even before the foundations of this world who who was in the father who was in the father holy and blameless um called to be uh manifested as his son um sealed with the holy spirit so the moment you say i am um that i am i am as no connection to our physical it, it even though you know we we share the same body but that i am is not the product of our human upbringing that i am is not the product of the world's um um world's teaching or the uh, the world fashioning us according to its way um that i am is purely uh, a child of god that i am purely is a son of god who is who who has our heavenly father um as his um uh, for a true uh, origin and source so so folks what i want to say is that the moment you say i am you are not referring to an outward uh, modeling of you outward look of you you are referring to that inner being the inner man the spiritual man who who is fathered who is being fathered by the um by the truth by the holy spirit and now it is our um responsibility to let this inner man um truly father the physical part of us the physical being of us um how how would you do that um we do that by by listening uh listening to the gospel let me give you an example when god told joshua that joshua um that the whole land of canaan i have given to you wherever your feet stands that place belongs to you nobody will be able to stand before you all the days of your life um so then he said you know to help you to make this promises relevant to you so that it comes to pass in your life only do one thing just think about meditate about what i told you all the time just guard these words all the time and what happened folks it's not that whenever joshua entered the land of um, canaan there were no opposition the land of the land of canaan was full of opposition that's the physical part but 
he allowed him to be fathered by by the i am by by the truth uh, by what god told so for it it is for us to now uh, continue to think about this continue to hear the truth continue to understand who we truly are and being fathered by the spirit um and not to say negative words because you, your mind will just grasp it and it will go into subconscious mind but the moment you hear this beautiful wonderful gospel uh, and um, and think about it and meditate upon it and and believe it it has the power to rewire our um, subconscious mind this truth truths go into our subconscious mind and um, it, it it has the capacity and the power to change um, our genetic uh, code the dna um, it has uh, it will rewire our thinking and um, and you will realize that the true you is a divine a divine person just like in the book of peter bible in the gospel sorry in the in the book of peter that peter wrote in first peter or in the second peter it says that we are now partakers of his nature there is more not just his nature um again in the gospel of john it says in the chapter 1 to those who believed in him to those who believed in what jesus told about who they are in what jesus told about their union with the father about the oneness those who believed in in him they got the power to become the children of god power means the ability to change things there is an there is an ability to change things for good so if our brains are rewired that's a manifestation of god's power in us if our thinking is changing that's a manifestation of god's power in us the power changes things uh, so negative power changes things for the worst good power changes things for the good so even in physics you know that whenever there is power you know the work uh, um, with time whenever there is power the, um it changes things it changes reality so the god gave us power to be the children of god so that we can uh, that the power of god through us will manifest and change our thinking change our wiring and the change the world and atmosphere around us so he gave that power so power, we we became the partakers of his divine power that is why in paul's first prayer to the church of ephesians in ephesians chapter 1 we see that uh, let me read from ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 onwards which is paul's prayer for the church of ephesians we see this this is why since i heard about your faith in the lord jesus christ and your love for all the saints you know our father is love uh, god is love that means you are love i am love say that i am love your core in that is the truth our core in our being is love i am love i am beyond conquering and uh, don't use negative words just go with the right positive words through the spirit that has the capacity to change us there therein lies the power that can change us because jesus said my words they are life and they are spirit it has the power to change us so uh, book of ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 this is why since i heard about your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all the saints i never stop giving thanks for you as i remember you in my prayers then uh, jumping to yeah um verse 18 i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength which he demonstrated in jesus christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens far above every ruler and authority power and dominion and every sorry folks 
and every name that is named and he put everything under his feet and appointed him as the head over everything for the church which is his body the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way what we see here is that that the same spirit who demonstrated the power that he has in Christ Paul is saying that same spirit is at work in us the same spirit we are at one with that same spirit and what does that spirit do what what does what does the inner man do what what is that i i am within us do who is in union um with the holy spirit the spirit of who is in union with our father what does it do he he always and is he has already lifted us up and is constantly lifting us up in our physical being in our thinking um and and constantly showing us where we are seated and constantly letting us know that all things are subjected to to the i am in us to me and that i am is in union with christ that i am is not not merely the physical thinking it that i am is the innermost being within us who is a partaker of his nature who is a partaker of love who has who has partaken of his power um, who has partaken of his greatness his glory and who is constantly lifting us up even from the very beginning when i whenever i think about love and whenever i hear that god is love always a thought comes to me that love will never leave anybody who receives that love lower it will always lift that person up to the same level so folks i would say continue to meditate on the beautiful gospel think about it and um, and let the gospel let the spirit continue to father our physical being father our um, physical realities father our thinking our bodies and uh, surely there will be a change in our lives um we will see i mean there's a, there's already a massive change within us i mean we were dead and now we are alive uh, but when i say a change i meant um the way we think i meant our genetic um, uh, negativity will go um and uh, and 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 that's that's a that's a glorious hope and um yeah there is there is much more depth to all of this but you know what i'm so happy that this is that day and holy spirit is there along with you to lead you into beautiful depths of the gospel so may god bless you all you are all blessed with all the spiritual blessings in heaven in jesus christ amen Well, thanks for watching today and if you really felt something spoke to you today or touched you feel free to get in touch and you can do that by just searching River City Church Ireland on Facebook or on YouTube and I just really believe that as you're just listening to these messages that something is changing in your life because the word of God never returns to him void God bless you